In this video, we'll discuss the different career opportunities using Microsoft Power BI as your core technology. We'll outweigh the pros and the cons of every choice. Let's get started. Your first option is the option that most people take. They go for the classic career path. Your job title might be Power BI Data Analyst, Developer, BI Admin or BI Project Manager, depending on your interests and expertise. Now, of course, this choice comes with some pros and cons. The pros include a stabler income, often with benefits like healthcare, contributions to your pension fund, or even a company car. You also have the job security aspect, as you can rely on the fact that your boss will have to respect a certain amount of weeks of notice. Compared to other options, you don't have to go and look for tasks that you can work on. They will usually tell you what to do or align the different objectives. The cons include a lower pay compared to the other options, limited control over what kind of work that you do, and also a strict schedule. However, since the pandemic, most companies have let go of a strict 9 to 5 and allow for some flexibility in this regard. But in the end, you are bound to the rules that the company sets. Let's also look at the most popular alternative to a job, which is becoming self-employed as a freelancer. Freelancing is a popular way for technical profiles to earn more, while also getting back some of that freedom that they might not have in a 9-to-5 job. It's often considered a good choice when you have the option to, but it also has some downfalls. Freelancing might involve having to set up a company, which requires you to understand accounting and taxes. You can rely on an accountant, but they don't work for free either. Another con is the isolation that may occur as part of freelancing. If you're not surrounded by colleagues, well, it might become lonely after a while. And finally, finding new projects can also prove to be very challenging. On the flip side, freelancing is often the best way to significantly increase your income without having to take a lot of risk. You're also free to work whenever and wherever you want and can take a vacation if you're not on any projects. The final benefit is the fact that you get exposure to different companies and industries, allowing you to find your passion and become more knowledgeable. The third career option is teaching others. Power BI developers are high in demand. So this also implies that there is a market for training people in Power BI and related technologies whether through online courses, YouTube videos, physical trainings or blogs, teaching others is a great way to earn additional income while helping others become better in RBI. The pros include having the flexibility in choosing when you work and what kind of topics you teach. I also find that when teaching others, I learn a lot myself. In this regard, I recently decided to create a Udemy course for the DP500 exam. This exam is a more advanced Power BI exam, which includes the integrations with different Azure services and also external tools like Tabular Editor and Duck Studio. If you're planning on taking the exam, check out the link in the video description and make sure to leave some feedback on how we can improve the course. Moving on with the cons of teaching others, well, it takes time. Growing a channel like this is a lot of work and the same goes for creating a course on Udemy. You really have to deep dive into a certain topic in order to be able to teach others. Then again, working on something that you're interested in might not feel like working after all. Just make sure that you have a clear goal before you start and also don't give up too soon. Now, the fourth and final option is launching a startup in Power BI. Yes, you heard that right. Let me explain. If multiple organizations can benefit from a Power BI report, why not develop it once and turn it into a SaaS offering? If you can find your niche and turn the solution into a scalable product, you have a viable business model. This works best when the data source is from a commonly used third-party program, for example, Salesforce. Also with the same data structure for every organization. This way, you don't have to reboot the reports every time for every new client. Instead, you can focus on other things like marketing and sales.
If you can think of an idea and decide to pursue it, I would also advise you to involve a co-founder that can help you with some of the workloads. Because trust me, there will be plenty of things to do. Alright, that was it for this video. I hope this gave you some more insights on the options that you have as a Power BI developer. Whether you're an experienced profile or just getting started, I wish you all the best in your Power BI journey and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.